That's very Christian Grey vibes. Why do I like that sentence? Oh my god, what's happening to me? Well, hello people to the internet, my name is Kevin and welcome back to another video. Okay guys, so for today's video, I'm actually so excited for this because I am going to be doing something that I've wanted to do for a while now and I saw a couple of you actually suggest me reading this series in my comments when I was doing my reading for the first time series but I had already read the book so I was like, I don't know, but then I was like, you know what? What's wrong with a reread? I'm currently also in a rereading mood where I've been rereading my favorite books and stuff. So I was like, you know what? I might just do it. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So I am going to be rereading Divergent by Veronica Roth for the first time in seven years. I read this back in 2013, I believe. Oh my God, wait, that's eight years then. I forgot we're in 2021. Eight years. Rereading for the first time in eight years. Wow. And I think Divergent recently just celebrated its 10th year anniversary, like it's been out 10 years now. And I just think it's be a fun time. So I'm gonna dive into a reread of this book and see, did it age well? Is it still good? Like, I remember when I first read this, it was a five out of five stars. It was a favorite book of mine at the time. However, obviously my reading tastes have evolved over time. Things have changed, like what I like in a book, what I don't like. Everything has changed, so I'm not sure if this book is still going to be like one that I absolutely love and adore when I reread it, we shall find out. And also on my channel recently, I've been doing videos now where I read a book and then I'll watch its adaptation as well. Like I don't think I've watched Divergent since that movie came out as well. And I remember loving the movie, but we're going to rewatch that as well after I read this and we shall see has my opinions changed? Do I still feel the same way I used to about this series? We will have to find out. I'm really looking forward to it. And also, I'm not gonna lie, this is still one of my favorite book covers for a series. I love the Divergent book covers. If you've never watched one of these videos where I read a book for the first time, or in the case of Divergent, reread a book for the first time in so many years, I share my spoiler-filled reaction. So if you don't want to be spoiled for Divergent, then do not continue watching this video because I'm gonna share all my spoiler reactions, tell you everything. Here we go. Time to start. I'm excited. I feel like today, the future starts. So it's a good day. I'm excited. <laughs> okay guys, so I've just started reading the book. I'm up to page 27. I'm on chapter four. Four, of course. Like, we love to see that. Four, I was gonna say that's foreshadowing. No, it isn't. It's literally just chapter four. Like, every book has a chapter four. That is absolutely not foreshadowing. And already, like, I'm not, like, disliking it or anything, but there's parts that I'm just reading, and I, like, how did I not notice how messed up this is? Because, like, abnegation... Okay, wait, before I get into that, in case you haven't read the book before, this is your first time finding out the book because you have no desire to ever read it, I'll give you a bit of a rundown as to what's going on. So basically this book is a dystopian YA book where in the world the people are divided into five different factions. Those are abnegation, which are for people who are very selfless. Then there is amity, which is like for the peaceful kind of people. Then there's candor, which is for people that value honesty. Then there's erudite, which is for people that are supposed to be really intelligent. And then there's Dauntless, which is supposed to be like the brave and like the fighters, that kind of people. And they're the five different factions that you can be in. And basically they kind of like separate you and like divide the people up into these factions based on your personality and like which one you are fitted towards. And the way you do that is that you do this test where you get put into a simulation and depending on what answers and like what you do in the simulations, it tells you which faction you belong in. And then you pick which one you want to go into and all that kind of stuff. And it happens when you're 16 years old, which is how old our main character is. So she just did the test where it tells her which faction she belongs in. And she ended up getting told that she is divergent, which means she suits more than one of the factions. Like based on her reactions in her simulation, she is able to go into abnegation, dauntless and amity. Like she suits all three, wait, is it amity? A few moments later. Oh wait, no. She suits abnegation, dauntless and erudite. So like she could pick either of those three because her personality suits all three. And that means she's divergent because she fits more than one of the categories. That's basically what you need to know. Her parents are in abnegation and like I think in this world it's just seen as a thing that you stay in the faction you were born into. So the fact her parents are abnegation and stuff it's kind of shocking that like she doesn't fit abnegation because she should and that's just like how it works in the society and everything like that. But I have just been reading like the very very start of it and abnegation like 
I'm sorry, but there's being selfless and then just literally just hating yourself. And that's what abnegation is. I remember when I first read this when I was younger, clearly I was being a pick me Kevin boy moment and being like, wow, I'm different. I'm like, not like other boys. Like that's what I was having because I used to think abnegation was like a really good one to be in because it meant you were a really good person. But sorry, I don't want to be in abnegation. This is boring. Like, no, who wants to be in abnegation? Absolutely not. It says that our faction allows me to stand in front of the mirror on the second day of every third month. They only have certain access to how many times they can see each other in a mirror. Safe to say if I was in this world, I wouldn't be allowed to vlog because I'm literally seeing myself right now. So I would not belong in abnegation. The other factions celebrate birthdays, but we don't. It would be self-indulgent. So you're not allowed to have a birthday. You're not allowed to have fun in abnegation. Like why did younger Kevin want to be in this faction so badly? No, <laughs> no. And then like the fashion that they wear in abnegation, they wear gray robes. Gray is not my color. Why did I ever want to be in this faction? It has to be the fact I was in the closet and just trying to blend. Oh, that's kind of sad. Don't love that for younger Kevin. Older Kevin and wiser Kevin knows abnegation is not where I belong. And then also it says that like the gray clothes, the plain hairstyle and the unassuming demeanor of my faction are supposed to make it easier for me to forget myself. You've heard it here first folks that abnegation is a no self love psycho. Like you're not allowed to love yourself in abnegation. Nope. Nope. <laughs> abnegation is, why did I ever like abnegation? <laughs> I don't, I can't understand this right now. I'm gonna have to do like a test or something in this video to see where I would actually belong. But now I'm thinking I'm probably Amity or would I be, er no, I wouldn't be Erudite. I'm not smart enough. Let's not get ahead of myself. <laughs> not smart enough to be an Erudite. Anyways, I just wanted to talk about that because the fact like when I read that when I was younger, I thought it was so quirky to be an abnegation. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. Okay, I've been continuing the reading and I'm on page 28. Literally like a page since I picked it up again. And why did I want to be in abnegation? Literally, page 27. Everything. Our houses, our clothes, our hairstyles is meant to help us forget ourselves and to protect us from vanity, greed, and envy, which are just forms of selfishness. If we had little and want for little, and we are all equal, we envy no one. I mean, I kind of get the whole like, not envying other people kind of part of it, but like, why is it meant to make you forget yourself and protect you from vanity greed? Like, why are they making, like, Maybe like subconsciously I wanted to be an abnegation because they hide themselves so much so they don't express who they actually are and because I was in the closet when I was reading this book that's just how I felt. Wait, I think we're diving into personal trauma. Let's not go down that route. That's a whole other ball game we do not need to touch upon. So let me just keep reading. Okay guys, so it's the next day and I have been reading a little bit, not a lot. Anyways, I've gone off the page 61, I'm on chapter seven and we have met Christina and we've also met four, which of course we know is gonna be Tobias because she already talked about how like Tobias was this guy who was like a friend of her dad's son and he like left his faction of abnegation and went to Dauntless and like obviously the whole book when you first read this it's kind of like oh my god who is for and then you find out it's him but I already know all that but we've met him and I remember when I was like first reading this how much I fell in love with four like I was literally obsessed with him the actor however who played him in the movie I still do love because he is now sometimes you just have to appreciate a good man and he's one of them. So that's where I am in the book and she basically was the first one to jump down into the Dauntless like headquarters and stuff and she's going to start her initiation to become Dauntless. All of that fun stuff. Nothing else I need to talk about really but I just wanted to mention that we have met them. Oh also she changed her name to Triss because it was Beatrice 
And then like she got to change her name when she got into Dauntless and she changed it to Triss. And I feel like that was a girl boss moment, you know, where she's like, I think my new name is Triss. Like that's what I just feel like that was about. Okay, so I'm on page 79 and it's at the part where they're starting their initiation process where they have like three different stages and they get ranked on like just these stages and then their ranking goes to like a total. And if they don't finish within the top 10 by the end of the whole thing, they get cut and like become factionless. So that's basically what's happened and they're finding out all these different things. And their first training thing is like a physical one. And so they're like practicing using a gun and like I think they're gonna do sparring, like fighting and stuff. And I didn't realize how hungry Triss was for power because she's like shooting the gun and she gets it in the middle of the target and she says, I am awake, my eyes wide open. My hands warm, I lower the gun. There is power in controlling something that can do so much damage in controlling something, period. Maybe I do belong here. She's ready to take down this system that has put them into factions. Like, I think that's what she's trying to say. So maybe she's trying to be a girl boss right now. Like, that was a girl boss moment for her, I think. And you know what? We kind of love that for Triss. Okay guys, so it's a new day once again. I still haven't read that much, but I'm planning on trying to finish it today anyways. And I'm on page 127. Actually, that's a lie. I'm on page 130, but there's a part I just want to read out that's on page 127. So this is between Molly and Triss. Molly is this girl who is also a Dauntless initiate, and she's kind of like being like one of the bad, like mean girls kind of thing. And Trace is like talking to one of her old friends because she's after meeting up with like a group of Amity initiates and one of her friends that was in Abigation is after going to Amity so she's just talking to that person really quick and the old friend calls Triss Beatrice because obviously that's what they know her name to be and Molly literally says Beatrice demands a nasal voice next to me. Molly folds her arms and laughs. Is that your real name Stiff? I glance at her. What did you think Triss was short for? Oh I don't know. Weakling. She touches her chin. If her chin was bigger, it might balance out her nose, but it is weak and almost recedes into her neck. Oh wait, that doesn't start with Triss. My mistake. Sorry, but like Molly thinks she really did something there. Like the fact that she thinks like she really roasted her, like saying, oh, what does Triss stand for? Weakling. Do better, Molly. If you're gonna roast someone, roast them right. Molly from after would be disgusted. Molly, you have a reputation to uh, uphold for being the mean girl in books, and you're not doing it right now because that was subpar performance right there. But anyways, I'm up to page 130. Nothing's really been happening. They've just been training and stuff like that. I think the scene is coming up where they use the zip line and I cannot wait to get to that scene. Okay, so I'm now up to page 157 and I just want to say that this reread is honestly just making me really happy. And I also want to say that I think I'm quite biased to this book, so I think we need to acknowledge that during this review. I think because I read this when I was 17 and I absolutely loved and adored it so much when I read it then, it has like a special place in my heart. And like during my reread of it, I feel like I'm not being very critical about it. But like, I also don't value myself as a very critical reader. I feel like I read books for fun. And I just share my reactions to the books. But I also kind of want like, this to be some sort of a critical reread. But I feel like it's just not happening because I feel like I'm getting hit with all the nostalgia and just remembering how happy this book made me when I was 17 and like, I'm just reliving all of those moments and like I feel like I'm doing this for 17 year old Kevin. I don't know how else to explain it, like I just feel like I'm doing it for my younger self and like it's kind of a cute little moment and just like all of the scenes, I'm remembering how happy they made me when I first read them. It's a beautiful little moment, honestly. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you're in a reading slump and you just can't read anything new, reread a favorite book of yours. It literally puts you in the best mood gets you in the mood to read and it's just such a good time. And the reason that I'm thinking about this right now is because I just read the scene where they play capture the flag. So they're literally playing capture the flag and Triss climbs a Ferris wheel because she wants like a height advantage to try see where the other team are and where they've put their flag. And she obviously sees like light in the distance so she knows they're over there. And her and Four climb the Ferris wheel and we find out that Four is afraid of heights because he's like really nervous doing it and Triss is just not scared. 
And it's just such a cute moment because I remember when I first read this, that was when I started to like really ship them. And ah, oh, it's just so cute. Like I'm just, it's such a happy time. Such a happy time. Except for the part where I thought I was at abnegation. That's a joke. That's still a joke. I just got the really stunning scene where, well actually it's not really a stunning scene because if this was happening to me, I would be shitting myself. Like I would not be saying, oh my God, steady. <laughs> like no, but it's the scene where Tris like volunteers. Oh my God, she volunteers a tribute, little hint to the Hunger Games, where she like stands in front of the this board and four throws knives instead of this guy named Al who was supposed to do it. And she stands there while four throws knives at her. And he's just throwing them and everything. And then like his last one he throws it and it like nips the top of her ear. And he's like, I did that on purpose. Like I did that on purpose. Like you should be thankful that I'm helping you. And all these different things. And he literally says to her because she's like really mad. Like how dare you do that? Like you're just as bad as Eric and all this kind of stuff. And he literally says, you know, I'm getting a little tired of waiting for you to catch on. If I wanted to hurt you, don't you think I would have already? Why do I like that sentence? That's actually not really a good sentence to like. He's saying like, if I wanted to hurt you, I would have done it already. Actually, why do I like that? That's very Christian Grey vibes. Why do I like that sentence? Oh my God, what's happening to me? Okay guys, so I am now up to page 282 of Divergent. I've actually read quite a bit since I last updated and I am now up to the point where they're doing like the second initiation where they like take the serum and it puts them into like this alter reality simulation kind of thing where they kind of get faced with their fears and like they're being tested to see how long it takes them to calm down and get out of the simulation. That's basically what the whole point is. You're facing all your fears because Dauntless is supposed to be brave. You're not supposed to have fears and all that kind of stuff. Trace is able to like get out of the simulation really quickly because she's divergent. She knows the simulations aren't real. So therefore she's able to get out of it so easily and like manipulate the simulation so that she gets out of them. So she's been doing them really, really quickly and Four found out that she's divergent and he's like, um, you need to hide that. You're not allowed to be divergent. And all these different things, we found out that like divergent get like hunted down and stuff because she went and talked to the girl who did her apt to test Tori. She went and discussed that with her to find out and Tori told her some stuff and all that jazz. And then she got like initial rankings for the second stage of initiation and Tris is ranked at number one, so she's top tier. Love that for her because she's just been doing so good in the simulations and stuff. And Peter, the guy who's like the bad guy, basically, we don't like him. He is just very annoyed that, because he's he's second, obviously he wants to be first, and he was second in the first rankings for the first part of initiation. And he ended up stabbing the guy who was in first place in the eye so that he got eliminated. That's what he does because Peter just likes to be on top. Maybe he likes to be on top in more ways than one, just saying. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what's been happening and Trish just got attacked right now where I am by Peter and her friend, friend, Al, who is, he's, Al's at the bottom of the list, like at the rankings, he's bottom of the rankings, so he's very close to becoming factionless. And Peter is still second, but he still wants to be first. So he just attacked Tris. And four came and like rescued her. And that's where I am. I have also read the zip line scene, AKA one of my favorite moments from Divergent. It's also one of my favorite parts in the movie. So I cannot wait to rewatch that scene. And also just because you get to meet Uriah. Uriah is my favorite character from Divergent. I love him so much. I wish he was in the movie more. I don't even think he's in the first movie. I really don't think he is in it at all. I know he's in the second movie, I think. I can't, yeah, I think he is, but he's barely in it compared to how much he's in the books. And Uriah is my, is my favorite character. I can't remember if he dies. He probably does because the majority of my favorite characters always end up getting killed off. So love that for me. So yeah, that's where I am. We're kind of also getting a little bit of a hint as to where Erudite are trying to manipulate Abnegation to be the bad guys. So Abnegation are like the faction that control the government because they're selfless. They're able to do like government things correctly because they're selfless. And Erudite is trying to like paint this picture that Abnegation are like ruining everything and giving food away to like the factionless, which 
is just a selfless thing to do, to give food to the factionless, but whatever, Erudite, you're just like, no, you shouldn't be doing that. And all that kind of stuff. So, like, the tension is starting between them, because we obviously know Erudite is the real bad guys. And we also overheard Eric, who's one of the Dauntless leaders, talking to someone, saying to Eric that you need to hunt down the Divergent, you need to find them. And we all know this is Janine. Well, if you haven't read Divergent, you wouldn't know it's her, but I have read Divergent, so I know it's Janine. Gonna keep reading and finish, and I really want to do the test den to see which faction I would be in. I really think Amity is probably where I belong. But then there was a scene with like Amity people and they were like playing the banjos in the back of a van and like doing farming. And I was like, does that mean I'm a country boy? Like yeehaw realness? Honestly, I think I could probably serve that. But then like the double denim moment, like if that's their outfits, I don't think I can pull off double denim, to be honest. Like that's just not a thing for me. Other people can nail it, but I personally just cannot pull off double denim. So maybe I don't deserve to be an Amity, but also where else do I belong? You know, like I'm interested to see what do you guys, like if you were to pick a faction for me, where do you think I would belong? Okay guys, so I have read quite a bit <laughs> since I last spoke to you. I'm up to page 408. I don't remember the last time I updated, but I keep forgetting to stop and vlog because it's a reread for me. So nothing like shocking is happening because like I know the story. So like rereading it, I'm like, okay, yeah, I get this. But then I'm realizing, Kevin, you're doing a vlog. You're supposed to be telling your thoughts. Not doing great at the vlogging. Basically, everything has happened. She is a finished initiation process for Dauntless. She did her fear landscape, which is where you go through the simulation and you face all your fears and you have to like overcome them and everything like that. And like the more you have, or no, it actually doesn't matter how many you have. It just matters how quick you can get through them all. So we found out that Triss has seven. We also found out that the reason four is called four is because he only has four fears in his fear landscape, which is like one of the like records in Dauntless, like never heard of before. Then basically Will and Christina, which are Triss's two friends during Dauntless and everything, they are like together now. They're like boyfriend, girlfriend kind of thing. Triss and Four are basically boyfriend and girlfriend as well. What else is going on? We know that there's a war happening. Erudite is about to attack Abnegation and they're going to use Dauntless as soldiers. And she went to visit her brother Caleb in Erudite because she was just upset and she went to go see him. He was a dick, we don't like Caleb. And she bumped into Janine as well and Janine was kind of questioning her because clearly Janine is suspecting that Triss is type virgin. So she questioned her, but Triss we think like got away with it and like managed to convince her that she wasn't. And literally what just happened is we got the scene where Tobias shows Triss his tattoos. That's one of my favorite scenes when he like takes his top off and it's on his back and it just has the symbols, like these symbols of all the different factions. So this is the symbol for um, Dauntless. So he has all of the different symbols on his back and he's like, I want to be brave. I want to be honest. I want to be kind. I want to be selfless. I want to be... Wait, what are all the words? I wanna be me, me, me. He's clearly an itsy stan. That's what it is, honestly. We've all started to put down the virtues of the other factions in the process of bolstering our own. I don't want to do that. I want to be brave and selfless and smart and kind and honest. That's why he has all of the tattoos, but we also know he's divergent because that just hasn't been revealed yet, but I've read the book. I already know he's divergent as well. I love that moment in the movie as well. It's one of my favorite scenes and I just love it in the book. So I really enjoyed rereading that moment. Final thing that we need to talk about is they've just got their injections, which is supposed to be a tracking device. But in reality, this is gonna end up being the serum that got injected into them so that they can be controlled by Erudite to be the soldiers to attack Abnegation, which is about to happen. Spoiler alert, that's literally about to happen. I've just read it before, so I know it's coming. Okay guys, so I've just finished rereading Divergent, and before I give my final thoughts on the book, and give you a little final recap on the book, I'm actually gonna include the footage that I did taking the test so you can see what faction I belong in. Okay, so it's time to take the quiz. I've gotten this from Epic Read, so I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out. Obviously not sponsored or anything, but that's just where I'm using the quiz. When you are faced with a difficult problem, you react by making a list of pros and cons and then choose the option that the evidence best supports. That sounds very long and I would not do that. Create a work of art that expresses your feelings about the situation, doing whatever will be the best thing for the greatest number of people. 
debating the issue with your f friends facing it head on. Okay, so I'd either do doing whatever will be the best thing for the greatest number of people or debating the issue with your friends. No, I probably do what's best for most people. So I'll go with that one. You most want your friends and family to see you as someone who is willing to make sacrifices and help anyone in need, is liked by everyone, is trustworthy, will protect them no matter what happens, offers wise advice. I like the last three, but I do like to think myself as being a very trustworthy and loyal person. So I do like that one. But I do also like people seeing me as someone who they can come to for advice. I think trustworthy is more like what I was drawn to. If you had to select one of the following options as a profession, which would you choose? Judge, ew. Firefighter, no. Scientist, no. Farmer, no. Humanitarian. I would choose none of these. Firefighter, very dangerous and I respect everyone who's able to be a firefighter, but it just could not be me. Scientist, I'm not smart enough to be a scientist. Farmer, I live in like the countryside of Ireland, so I couldn't honestly, I probably could just pick that one, but I don't really think I am a farmer. I don't even know what a humanitarian is. I feel stupid. I'm just gonna go with farmer. What activity would you most likely find yourself doing on an unexpected day off? Reading. Is that an option? Oh my god, it is! Reading, of course. That's what I would be doing. When choosing your outfit for the day, you select whatever will attract the least amount of attention. Absolutely not. Something that will not distract or inhibit you from what you have to do that day. No, okay, I won't do that. Something comfortable but interesting to look at. Yes, also would do that. Whatever will attract the most attention. Mm, not sure about that. Something that's simple but still express. Oh, I love that one. The last one, yeah. If you discovered that a friend's significant other was being unfaithful, you would. Tell your friend ASAP. You can't imagine keeping the, that knowledge secret. Confront the cheater. Sit them both down and act as a mediator. No. Keep it to yourself. No. Yeah. Tell your friend. It's, unhe it's unhealthy for them to be in a relationship where such selfish behavior is present. Exactly. I would tell my friend. Yeah. What would you say is your highest priority in life right now? Success in work or school, finding peace and happiness for yourself, seeking truth in all things, serving those around you. I feel like finding peace and happiness for yourself. Yeah, like I just wanna be happy. So I picked that one. I think I'm gonna find out who I am. Is this a joke? I'm having an identity crisis. How did we get here? I really don't think that's correct. I'm having a... I guess I'm in abnegation. I don't agree with this. <laughs> I do not agree with this. Anyways, that's what I am, guys, apparently. Apparently, I actually am in abnegation. But yes, back to the book. I did end up still really, really enjoying this. I think maybe I would give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars now if I was to rate it. Not the full 5 stars, just because maybe there's some things in here that, as I'm older, I just don't like as much. But, like, only, like, little teeny tiny things, like... For example, like earlier on in the vlog when I mentioned like Molly's comeback to be the mean girl in it, I was like, is that it? Like, is that the best you've got? Like maybe because I've just read more books where they're just a bit more, like they roast each other more or something, I don't know. But like maybe when I was 17, when I read that, I was like, oh my God, she's being so bad. But like now I'm like, that was harmless. You know what I mean? But anyways, basically what ends up happening at the end of this book, like I said already, they get a needle injected into their neck, which is supposed to be a tracking device, but it actually takes over the minds of all of the Dauntless and actually makes them controlled by Erudite to become soldiers and attack abnegation. However, this serum does not work on anyone who is divergent, so it does not work on Triss and it does not work on Tobias. So they just pretend and act like they're like the others so that they can blend in, but they get caught and they get taken by Janine, the woman who is the head of Erudite and head of all of this sabotage that's going on. Whilst there, Tobias gets taken up by another serum and he ends up becoming bad and like he actually is under control of the serum. However, Triss's mom like rescues her because we find out that Triss's mom is also divergent. Then Triss's mom dies because she gets shot when they're escaping and everything. And then Triss ends up killing Will, which is one of her best friends from Dauntless. Like it's Christina's boyfriend and everything. She ends up killing him because he's under this brainwash and he was attacking Triss. So she had to defend herself and she killed him. And then she finds her dad and Tobias's dad and once again, they go to try get saved to bias. However, Triss's dad then dies. So that's really sad that like both her mom and her dad die in such a short period of time. And then she ends up rescuing Tobias where he nearly almost kills her. But like when she like surrenders and allows him to do it, he finally snaps out of it and he gets away with it. 
They shut down the serums and all the Dauntless are back to themselves. And then Triss and Tobias get on like this train because they're going to the Amity sector to where all of the abnegation have fled to to get away from the attacks that they were getting. And that's where the book ends. I think that's all of my reactions. I don't think I have any other theories or anything to tell you. As I already said, I felt like I was extremely biased while rereading this because I was just remembering how much I loved it when I was younger and all of those different things. So it made it hard for me to look at it in a critical sense. So I apologize for that. If that's something that you wanted from me, I just got attacked and got hit with all the nostalgia and I wish I was able to look at it not like that. Anyways, I'm going to be doing another video now where I go and watch the movie and I'll do my commentary for the movie, so make sure you look out for that. And other than that, that is gonna be it for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comments if you've read this book, what your thoughts of it are, what's your thoughts on the movie, all these different things. Maybe let me know what your faction would be if you were in this world, like what woman would you get placed into? And other than that, that is gonna be it for this video and I shall see you all next time in my next one. So goodbye guys. Come on.